Look at that expansion of that air. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the force of this completely, this is jiggling more than it's Saturday night, man. Look at uh, that shrapnel blasting out and the bullet continuing through. Welcome back everybody to Shift Fire, the exploration and appreciation for all things military culture. It's good to be back with you folks. I'm Israel Wright, one of your hosts, former Green Beret, and with me as always, the one, the only. Thank you, Israel. What's going on, Fire Team? Cameron Fath, former Army Ranger, and today you are tuned in to an episode of Lethal Antiquities. More specifically, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing what in the military is known as an AAR, or After Action Review. Pretty much where we take a look at what training we did and what training value came from that. We are here back with the amazing Clay. What's going on, Clay? Good to see you guys. Clay, good to see you. Absolutely. From MovieGunGuy.com, and he's going to kind of walk us through a little bit about ballistics, right? So ballistics, you've got a couple different terms in ballistics. You have internal ballistics, where what happens to the bullet in the gun to the point it leaves the barrel. You have external ballistics, where the elements that affect the bullet from the second it leaves the barrel to the t uh, point it hits the target, and then you have terminal ballistics. Which is which where is... we get into with all the gel. Absolutely, so tell me, what is this? Why is this here? What do you use it for? So ballistics gel was developed originally by the FBI to figure out penetration power for the different rounds they mm. were testing. Um, so it's designed as a rough approximation of a human body mm -hmm. so that they could put different body armors in front of this, they could put different clothing in front of this to see how far a round in question would penetrate. Mm -hmm. Not only how far it penetrates, but the tumbling effect. Once it enters the body, what is that round doing? And I mean, this is a great visual representation of how lethal some of these newer rounds, and even obviously the older rounds, yep. how effective they were um, back in like the 1700s, 1800s. So I'm right. pretty stoked to take a look at this. And you know, one thing I like about this is you'll see the more modern ballistics, uh, like they have the ballistics dummy that even has like organs and right. stuff inside, bones yeah, and bone organs. structure approximation. And Yeah, and it bleeds? Yeah. Oh man, see even that's even better, yeah. man. This particular gel is called uh, Clear Ballistics. It's from that company and it's much better than some of the older stuff because it was kind of milky and yellowy. Yeah. It's mm. difficult to see. With Clear Ballistics, you got a real clear path all the way through. Before we jump in, folks, we want you to hit that like button and that subscribe button to keep up with the latest and greatest with Shift Fire. That being said, let's get it on. So the first video we've got is the duck foot, which I think was my first surprise for you guys. Yeah. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, we just fired one ball just to see what the penetration would be, but uh, let's take a look. Boom. Whoa. Love you know, in <laughs> such a tiny package, it packs a punch. I mean, right. that's definitely at least what? I would six, seven inches of penetration. Into right? the human body, yeah. In the human body. So it definitely does the job of exactly what it was intended for. It was just a quick pistol to knock out numerous targets. And if it actually makes contact or is able to actually fire, yeah, well, uh, it, yeah, it's too. definitely going to do what it needs to do, right? It's going to take that person down. Or, I mean, back in the day, you, this is before a time of anesthetic and whatnot. Definitely injure them and let the bacteria and the infection kill them. Later. Exactly. That was yeah. a wild shot. You watch it as it goes through. It's almost like a spear of air going ahead of it, you know, and then it, it gets caught up in it finally towards the end once it gets right. into that matter. But you, you talk about the, the cavitation, which is that sphere of air you're talking about. So since your body is mostly liquid and, and this is as well, you'll see it and you can see it in slow motion. You'll see that uh, temporary wound channel open up. So not only do you have the hole that's the exact size of the round going in, but you've got all that extra damage happening. Oh, wow. It's expanding. It's expanding and pushing things out of its Oh, and way. damaging the surrounding tissue as well. Exactly. Wow. So it's not only the penetration that gel helps you see, but it's also all that cavitation. Oh, wild, man. Wouldn't be a good day to be on the receiving end of that. <laughs> no. No. Or, or the days following if you can't get that thing out. That's pretty deep in there, six, right. seven inches? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I was going to say about eight inches, and it's, yeah, that's going to be a rough day. Absolutely. Well, let's move on to the next weapon and see what it got. All right. We have the dog lock. The so, dog lock pistol. Dog right. lock pistol. Dog lock pistol. So this is kind of the predecessor of the flint lock pistols you would see pirates and whatnot use. Yeah. Um, so this is a much bigger round, um, as you can see, and it's probably going to have a much bigger cavitation and be able to see this here in slow-mo. Oh, I like it. Do, do we get a piece flying off there as it goes in? Is, or? The, is that the wadding? The wad? That's probably yeah, the wadding. Probably, yeah. That's probably okay. the wadding there. Uh, what caliber bullet are we uh, using for the dog lock? I think that was 56. But 56 cal. So, I mean, it's a big it's, ball. It's about a half inch steel. around, right. I know. And, I mean, look at the penetration in front of the round. It looks like a spearhead, right? Yeah. Right. And that force and trauma is 
going to do a crazy amount of damage, not to mention from close quarters, that singe you see around the entrance wound is gonna absolutely cause third degree burns and you know, you can have a bullet in you and a serious burn. Right, and you can see the cavitation in front. You can see it even still in the, uh, in the gel here. So the round only went so far, but it, it opened its force out it opened. in front of where it stopped. Oh, wow. Exactly. I'm actually really intrigued to take a look at, you know, the bigger... Uh, the matchlock musket? Yeah, the matchlock right. musket and see what that did. Because they're <clears throat> shooting the same projectile. Right, same size. So the nice thing about the matchlock was we had a, a pretty similar size charge, if I recall correctly, but you get a much longer barrel. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about the internal ballistics. Absolutely. Longer barrel, more time for that uh, pressure to expand inside higher the barrel. Higher and much higher okay. uh, feet uh, per velocity. Second, yeah. Right. Ooh. Yeah, it gave it a little punch. That had some force to it. Yeah. yeah. yeah damn. That was like a punch to the chest. Not to mention, you could see that internal uh, almost trajectory that it takes and those air pockets that bubble up. Yeah. Even though it's the same size caliber, that FPS is, it's traveling much faster just due to that barrel length. Definitely. And I mean, the singe mark too, from close range, that's probably a first degree burn. Yeah, right that'll there. punch you. That's a good punch in the gut, man. Yeah. And and whatever's in this bullet's path tearing through and then you got that exit it just kept on traveling it went all the way through you know, yeah like it's we, i would love to see it stop and that was my actual expectation was it just to catch in to the gel it. yeah but then you'd said that this rifle was designed to be shot at armor dudes right. uh, wearing steel plates on horseback yep. and that penetrating force i definitely think it would rip right through a steel plate maybe catch but you're going to get the same amount of damage that you saw on that dog lock pistol internally in my you know I would assume, just because you have that steel plate in front of you, but right. that blew my mind. Probably the most impressed that I was out there seeing right. that. It was great. Yeah, and, and the impact on the way in, too. This moved the block, I think, more than all but one of the shots we did. Yeah. It really kicked it and you saw a huge impact. Yeah, a lot of force in the match lock rifle there. Yeah. Thinking just like all those air pockets that you're seeing in that internal trajectory that the bullet is going to take, that's ripping flesh, that's breaking bone, that's creating a giant entrance wound. And I, when you see bullet wounds, it might be small up front, but then you look at the back. Right. The back of the exit wound is typically blown out and you see it all the time, yeah. especially like you want to make a round comparison. The 545 round that AK shoot, yeah. or at least like the 74 the shoots, ones. man, that round can enter, you know, top of the shoulder and come out your just because it's tumbling. And that's what it was designed to do. But taking into consideration that this was a 52 millimeter uh, caliber, it's that's gonna do so much damage and it's gonna create so much trauma internally that it's gonna be, you know, damn near impossible in the day and age that they were utilizing this to save that person, right. in my opinion. And, and you talk about how much water we've got in our body, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the number changes every year, it seems, but there's a lot of water in the human body. And the cavitation we're seeing in this is pretty similar to what would happen inside. Mm -hmm. And that's all that extra damage that you're talking about. So it's pushing organs out of the way oh, and yeah. tearing. And, yeah, it's going to be yeah. a and those, yeah. yeah, The mix between blunt force trauma from that giant projectile and just the cutting of the precision that internal <laughs> trajectory takes, it's going to do a lot of damage. Bottom line, wouldn't want to be shot, regardless <laughs> of how old right. this weapon is. You know? Here's a fun, stupid fact for you. During the Inquisition, they had two different size shape of balls. They would use round balls for followers but they had square balls they would use for heretics. Oh, <laughs> down with the heretics. <laughs> Make them suffer. That's going to tumble. That's not necessarily just going to fly through the air. It's like right. a throwing star through your body. Exactly. Man. Yeah, that's oh going to rip you to shreds once it hits. It, you know, assuming that it takes the same trajectory, because obviously the, the rounded corners, and when you think about bullets being designed today, they're trying to mitigate, and you think about like ballistic coefficients nowadays, which is pretty much the closer you can get to one, the more perfect that round is. Uh, that's probably Probably not a really high BC, no. uh, but <laughs> I would, be real you low. know, next time, let's shoot some squares. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got one final black powder weapon that was expected to perform extremely well, <laughs> right. given the terrifying look of it, but really performed like a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> the blunderbuss. The blunderbuss, We yeah. expected a Rottweiler, but we got a Pomeranian. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, and like all these black powder weapons, you can change the load size. Mm -hmm. I was erring on the side of safety for us. Uh, uh, the last time we did a steel uh, cuirass test with this, uh, we fired it remotely because we're like, 
It's a little good. spicy. I don't yeah. want to hold on to this thing. Now, so. you you talking about just maybe backblast or like the, the make of the weapon might have been weak or something? It might have blown up in our hands? Right, and that was not uncommon, even in cannons of the day, because uh, metallurgy wasn't then, was not uh, the same okay. as it is now. It so, brass, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, sometimes they were brass, sometimes they were even cast. So cast iron can crack. Mm. This one was uh, brass alloy, so it's a modern one, so it's much more stable, but yeah. Still, I mean, considering to the application, right? If you're a salt pirate with a bunder bless and you got seawater and it's rusting and you end up shooting that thing and blowing your fingers off, earn yourself quite the pirate nickname. <laughs> Fingerless Joe over here right. shot the bunder bless and blow his <laughs> off. Shotgun stumpy. Yeah, but I mean, it was honestly, it was super disappointing. Awesome gun to shoot just to say like, hey, I shot a bunder bless. Right. Yeah. But, uh, Big poof. Yeah. I was honestly prepared to be on the receiving end of this after it like performed. It was like, yeah, I'll get shot by this. Right. It's like an airsoft gun. Yeah, it's mildly annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. extremely inconvenient. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look, see, see what it did. Just whacked it. Scared her. It's like a puh. Yeah. It's like a nice push. I mean, you could see, at least in the gel, right at the bottom had a tiny spike of penetration, right. which you know, would obviously cause a little bit of trauma, just like, but then again, you're playing with load sides, you're playing with actual projectiles. I mean, you've heard stories of dudes shoving glass down there. Oh yeah, And glass, glass spinning, nails. you know, yep. you're getting cut, you're getting lacerations. And that concept still still exists, you mm. know, if they're out of shot or whatever, they'll throw forks or spoons yeah. or whatever they got, rocks. Yeah, we saw it in Pirates of the Caribbean. Exactly, <laughs> um, but that still exists. There's uh, rounds called the Rhodesian ridge cutters, mm. or Rhodesian brush cutters rather, which are uh, stacked uh, washers cut in half inside mm. a 12 gauge shotgun shell. Ooh. So the concept still exists. Oh, yeah. Even I mean, in buckshot, right? Yeah, wow. we see it too but. in the modern day military, which uh, our Carl Gustavs can shoot an 84 millimeter flechette round, right. which anything standing in front of it is just going to get decimated into a. Sh it's, it shoots flechettes out at a s extremely high speed. And it, like, if you want to your, mow your lawn really well <laughs> right. and just like expect no grass to be there anymore, or say you got like an overgrown bush, you want to get rid of it, shoot it with a flechette round. Big block for big guns. Yep. All right, so looking at it first, I think it's worth noting the AR, right? Shooting 5.56. I was actually pretty stoked about this round because modern weapons, you have modern ammunition now. And you know, a lot of people think about, you know, your typical green tip, your M855 green tip ammunition, which you see widely available on the market. And even in the military, when I first started, we only utilized green tip, but I was able to get my hands on some M855A1 Enhanced. So that's gonna be the improved green tip ammo that we're using you know, overseas now. And I was more than happy with the <laughs> results that I saw. So Clay, uh, we talk about green tip. What is a green tip bullet? What are we talking about? At its core, literally in this case, the green tip bullet is gonna have a steel core instead of a lead core. So that's gonna let it punch through barricades and armor much easier than just okay. a regular lead core would. Okay, cool. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the footage, the slow-mo footage of uh, th this uh, round going through the ballistics gel. But you can see with this- Look at that expansion of that air, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the force of this completely, this is jiggling more than a Saturday night, man. Look at uh, that shrapnel blasting out and the bullet continuing through. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and you figure this is a six by six, six inch by six inch square. And, and they're decently heavy. Yeah. yeah, it is. And that cavitation filled it. I mean, it, it went almost to the edges of it. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that hitting living tissue and what that would do on the inside. And this is the, they call it the temporary wound channel where you can see that huge cavitation. Mm -hmm. A lot of that's gonna close up, but then you've got the permanent wound channel, which is left over, which you can still see. Mm -hmm. That's all, anything that was in there is gone. Yeah, yep, in the absolutely. target. And I mean, just looking at the entrance wound, it is a, the circumference of it is about the size of my pinky. So pretty big for a standard 5.56, because I've, I've seen a lot of times where you're doing blood sweeps on someone, and if they're just shot with either standard 5.56 or 7.62 even, it can look like a little mole. Yeah. Like you literally need to separate the skin and see blood squirting out to be like, oh, that's a hole, that's, that's not a freckle. This is extremely apparent that this dude just got shot by right. a crazy ass And you did mention on the backside, usually there's a huge exit wound. Mm -hmm. On this, not as much because yeah. that round is staying together. Traveling exactly where it wants to go. Yep. All right, let's take a look at another weapon here. Ah. Next, we got the old C96 Mauser. Classic. And this is a very modern round too. This is the standard nine millimeter parabellum that 
military and oh yeah used all over the world yep it's pushing everything away oh yep. wow and it goes right through permanent wound channel is just about as big as the 223 mm -hmm. and the temporary wound channel is a little bit smaller but tons of penetration obviously went all the way through the block that's why nine mil is such a good round as well i don't even want to get on the whole 40 cal nine mil <laughs> debate because literally people will have like an aneurysm in the comments section <laughs> nine mil works just fine okay yes, it does. <laughs> i mean it look if this was a human torso it's going right through and it's doing exactly what it wants to do i love nine mil. I, I personally carry a nine mil and the, this is just proof in the pudding that it's, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. Right. It's just, I mean, you have a lot of velocity here for such a small round. It's just knowing what's behind your target is a big consideration exactly. and putting backstops. Because same thing with the hot wall concept. It's like, yeah, 9mm can travel through drywall as well. True. Okay. So a little hard to see, but if you look at the bottom left there, there at the very bottom, that 45 hits and actually ends up going out the bottom and through our table. 45 <laughs> had the audacity to break our table. That's right. But think, um, I'm pretty sure just because, you know, 45 is a heavy round. It is. It's a heavy round and it doesn't have a lot of velocity. The heavier rounds with lower velocity equals more tumble. So the stopping power of a 45 is, you know, I wouldn't want to get shot by that because that'll literally knock you on yeah. Um, but you can see it starts to arc down because it's losing that velocity, but it's still penetrating. And, you know, that bullet's starting to wanting to move down because the force of its own weight is pushing it. How much does one of these uh, blocks run you? If somebody wanted to go out and play for a little bit. Uh, you can check clearballistics.com and they'll be able to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're actually not terribly expensive. Um, and the nice thing about them is you can melt them down and filter reuse everything them. out and reuse them. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah, so if you want to do that at home. And you mentioned also the torsos. They sell the gel torsos, uh, the molds, so you can buy a bunch of these and fill that up, and a head as well. All right. Moving on. Ah, uh, the HS-10. Yes. This is the bullpup shotgun. Right. So they designed this, <laughs> much like you said, you were talking about the hot walls. This was designed, in theory, to be the ultimate entry mm. weapon for a police force. Shoosh. I mean, I mean, the whole block. <laughs> it's uh, the it's like Slimer from Ghostbusters. Right. Oh my God. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I don't even see the entrance and the exit when yeah. it is right. blocked. It just becomes see. a bubble and a blob and yeah. gets off, it runs off the table. Yeah, but just thinking about, you know, a human body taking a slug, and you can just see that air expansion, right? That cavity opening mm -hmm. up. It's, it's like, a, it's like a harpoon going yeah. through the body. You can see it coming out the back there. And it's bigger than six inches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's expanded all oh, no. four sides of this. Absolutely, that is that is not a good day by any means. No. We've done some tests with uh, point blank body armor shooting uh, dummies that have basically clay in the torso. So you put a round into the body armor mm -hmm. and 12 gauge slug will stop in a 3A, no problem. Mm. The problem is you pull the armor up and see that giant, you know, Coke can size cavitation. In yeah, the that you just broke your stern of right. yep. and but, all your ribs. Yeah, and they, they've got uh, speed plates that are, you know, small 3A plates mm -hmm. that help spread some of that out. But this is, it's not gonna be a good day, man. Yeah, even if you survive it, even if it doesn't penetrate your vest, you're down. Yeah, yeah. Down for the count, man. Folks, thank you so much for joining us for this after action review of Lethal Antiquities with Clay. If you wanna see more science-based ballistic content, uh, let us know in the comments section if you wanna see more things like this. We'll get some, we'll get some ballistics gel, we'll get some bodies out there uh, and we'll, we'll go to town, it'll be fun. Hey, I'm no expert on ballistics, but I like to shoot so, give me an excuse, guys. If you guys enjoyed what you watched, let us know by liking the video. Head down to that comment section. Let us know your thoughts on the Ballistic Gel and what we saw today. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up on the latest from all things Shipfire and turn that notification bell so you know when new videos are coming out. Thank you so much for tuning in, Fire Team. We'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not a huge Ballistic expert, but it's just fun to shoot. <laughs> Content, yeah. It's also after action review. After action review. Yes. Oh. It's Thank you. Like, exactly. <laughs> about as thick as two, all right, two of you, maybe not two of us. Uh, so, I mean, you oh. can see, two, you know, it's, it's going to zip right.